I'm still amazed in this day and age that people still haven't met a Arab or a Muslim or an Iraqi even. Um, it's, uh, it's remarkable. And sometimes that's all it takes, uh, an encounter. It takes uh, two people to look eye to eye and see that they don't have that much really differences. They have a lot more in common as human beings. We tend to forget that we're all human beings. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get uh, mired and stuck into the borders and differences between us. But really, the similarities are far away the differences. And I think the one thing that I try to do is really to put a human face on a, on a conflict that otherwise is so abstract to most Americans. You also, I know, a very modest man and a man of peace, and yet courageous in your pursuit to build bridges of understandings between Jews and Muslims. Would you talk with us about some of that work and what are some of the accomplishments that have happened as a result of bringing people together? I grew up in a family where you couldn't say the word Israel, you couldn't say the word Jew mm -hmm. without being scolded. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea that to transform oneself out of that kind of um, um, you know, background that is so prevalent in, 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 in so many different cultures um, takes a lot of effort and takes a lot of work. And for me, the way that I do it is I bring people together so I can learn from them as well as hope that they can learn from me. I do what is called peace cafes, which brings Arabs and Jews together to sit down side by side and deal with uh, the issues. Uh, oftentimes, the things that really transform people are the personal stories they mm -hmm. hear. It's not about facts or pie charts or PowerPoint presentations. Yes. It's really about human stories. Yes. And those are the things that I see over and over again that are so transformative. Uh, and we tend to underestimate the value of human stories. Uh, we, we really, I mean, it's, it's remarkable how frequently human beings forget that they're human first. And then there are the other stuff. So we have to kind of remind ourselves sometimes and the stories do make us human to one another. And looking back, we've seen much change, and yet still so much to be done. Mm -hmm. How do you, what do you see for the next generation of young people, young Muslims, young uh, Arabs, young Jews, Christians? Young humans. Indeed, young humans. Yeah. Well, how do you see young people navigating these barriers that have existed for so long? Um, I speak to a lot of young people, and um, I, I obviously, you know, this sounds like a cliche, but they are the hope. They are really the, uh, the people we have to rely on to sort of get us out of, this, uh, of the circumstances that we've gotten ourselves into as, as grown-ups. Uh, I oftentimes apologize to young people and tell them, I'm really sorry what we've done to this world, and, and, now, and now it's your turn, unfortunately, to, 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 to clean up the mess that we've created. Um, I tell them that w what we've done is we've given them tools. There are tools out there to make the world a better place. There are ways for people to inform themselves and get to know one another better because through knowledge we can uh, be better as a world. Uh, we have to start working against militarism. We have to start stopping mm. the, the, um, the glorification of war, the glorification of warriors. Uh, it is time, I think, for us to start seeing a different way of resolving conflict. How often do we tell young kids to uh, resolve conflict peacefully? Uh, when kids in the playground fight with one another, they get expelled from school. Yes, yes, they get scolded. Yes, they get yes. sent home. Uh, we, we teach them to talk to one another in a civil way, that there's always common ground that they can find to be able to resolve a conflict. And they can agree to disagree without having to kill each other. So these are mixed messages. We have a government that is drunk with power, drunk with military uh, uh, power, and yet we tend to um, expect different from our children, expect them to behave in a whole different way when we model differently for them. Uh, so I hope that they can uh, take some of those uh, mistakes that we've done as grown-ups and be able to um, uh, sort of harness back that monster, the militarism, that has uh, gone out of control. Mm. Your restaurant, Bus Boys and Poets, is more than a restaurant. It is an island. It is a space where people from diverse backgrounds come together, not only to break bread and drink, but to help build community, 
to have books and to have presentations. Talk with us about that. What is sure. Um, you know, the food and the restaurant is, is, is an excuse. Uh, it, is, it is what we have in common as human beings that brings us together. When they come together, when people come together, they start seeing possibilities. They start seeing possibilities of change, of differences. I try to create an atmosphere that sort of enhances people's uh, ability to dream, to think, to create, um, where the art that we have on the wall, the books that we carry, uh, the, the, the type of conversations that we encourage, uh, the forums that we do, the films that we show, uh, all kind of espouse this sort of general feeling of um, humanity, of, of, of uh, peace, of understanding, of looking for commonalities, of um, uh, sort of going beyond uh, what the normal rhetoric that we hear day to day on the mass media of, of uh, just encouraging our differences and encouraging hatred, and encouraging uh, mm -hmm. militarism. This is a, a different paradigm that people walk into. And when they see so many others of like mind, people start seeing possibilities that things can be different and they can be better. So it's really, uh, that's, that's what I hope to be able to create in, in, in creating uh, environments like busboys and poets is to allow for that community to start uh, building itself back up again.